you've probably seen my walkthroughs of all the artwork that I've done for games like Burning Crusade, Wrath of the Lich King, Diablo 3, Fortnite, and Overwatch, but, but, I wanted to do a little bit more of a deep dive, okay? This is designed uh, for those of you who might be aspiring concept artists, or maybe you just love the game and you wanna know some of the alternate designs, some of the process of like how these characters and environments were designed. I never really get to talk about it much, but now that I'm somewhat retired from AAA game development, uh, I'm, it's fun for me to revisit some of these designs as I'm creating content for my new indie game, Twilight Monk, which you can wish list over on Steam. All right, dudes, <laughs> without further ado, uh, let's dig into, this one is gonna be about Zoltan Cool, one of my all-time favorite characters that I designed and one of my favorite dungeons, Terran Cool. All right, so let's, uh, let's just dig into it, man. Let's look at some Diablo 3, all right? All right, so firstly, uh, what we started with was actually the dungeon itself. And this was, when you're designing a location in a game, they just know the boss name and they have an idea of the theme and where it is and where it kind of fits into the lore. And so in this case, we were designing a place, a location called Terran Cool. And the idea behind Terran Cool was that it was a place where this mage had gone off to basically practice forbidden magics. And so we wanted something that felt ominous, something that felt uh, very uh, intensely frightening to players. And so my first designs that I had done for this dungeon, this was actually uh, by the request of one of the, uh, the concept artists, the lead concept artist had requested that we do these like cylindrical kind of towers. And the reason for that was one, this is a top-down game. Diablo 3 was a top-down game. So we wanted this verticality of being able to look down. Now this camera angle actually kind of cheats a little bit because we're kind of at a little bit more of a lower angle than what we get to see in the game, but we were still able to get a lot of the vibes. And sometimes I found this was good for concept art because it allowed us to see the larger scope of what a dungeon might feel like. And I wanted these kind of symmetrical feeling uh, structures, basically, something that felt like it had a bit more of a a symmetry creates a feeling of order. It creates a feeling of like uh, something that was constructed intentionally. It wasn't like cave uh, flooring, you know, throughout here. There's patterns drawn into the floor. Let me zoom in a little bit here so we can take a closer look. There's these like runes and, and patterns that are drawn into the floor down here. And so like these kind of become this, they had these symmetrical feeling to them because it was kind of like this, the way that you would see ornate kind of uh, high level priests of this magic uh, uh, kind of a, a religion or this belief, this faith. And so it would be elaborate and it would be ornate. It wasn't just like organic rocks and molten lava and stuff like that. But there was a problem with this piece and that was mostly that it felt a little too safe and cozy. And the reason for that is because of the blue lightning. Blue generally creates this feeling of comfort. And so what I ended up doing was redesigning it with, or just maybe doing a color shift, quite honestly. Not a full redesign. <laughs> Uh, wherever you can, find ways to just kind of get the same results with less work. Uh, so I didn't do a whole new painting. I just basically shifted all of that lightning. So now we got like red lightning and that's really cool. This whole place has this feeling of like the empire, you know, from Star Wars, obviously, you know, like this kind of feeling of um, uh, red generally generates this emotion from players of like, not fear, but like definitely danger, you know, like stop, you know, <laughs> kind of a thing. And then I kept a lot of these orbs, but you'll notice that the shapes of those orbs changed. And so in some ways it created a little bit more of a, uh, I think the reason for the orb shapes was that somebody in design had brought about this concept of, somebody else on the concept team was designing these orbs that you use in Terran Cool and they're part of like a puzzle sort of a thing. So I had to integrate that a little bit into the designs, but then having these windows kind of as they're like going down, I think I added in the final, there's a lot more because there are other artists that get involved. They use this as like the base, the starting point, and then they add their own magic to it. So like by no means did I design the final look for Terran Cool, but this image was, I think, essential in the early stages of getting things rolling for, because what, what you can see here is like, we see the walkways, right? We see the stairwells, uh, you know, the, the staircases. We see the flat playable areas and we see these pillars 
where the red lightning is, is jutting out of these uh, energy pockets. And that allows the modeler to extrapolate and build a lot more architecture from these core elements. And so that's just a little bit of insight into, you know, Terran Cool. Things did uh, evolve a lot. And believe me, when they got to build a generative dungeon out of these parts, you get some really cool stuff that, uh, that everybody who contributes to it adds a lot of their own thing to it. In this case, I wanted to design the, uh, or I was tasked with designing the entrance to Terran Cool. And we'll get to the character in a little bit, by the way. I just wanted to throw some of these other things that are related to it into this video. Uh, but this particular part, I, I wanted, didn't just want like a door. And that was, that was the biggest thing. Like whenever we were faced with kind of the obvious thing, it was like, okay, we need a gate, we need a door, we need an elevator. What can you do with that in the world of Diablo? that is a little bit more interesting. And so like this was the setting, like the deserts of Chaldeum. I had already designed a lot of stuff that, that had already kind of established the, the vibe of that environment. And so I was just really pulling in parts of like the atmosphere of the, like the overly dusty environment. And then having this structure that was representative of what you'll see in Terran Cool, like in these spikes and in these spires, the same kind of staircase that you see in the dungeon itself, this sort of like gives you a little preview of like, oh, there's something there. What is this gate? How do I even open it? And uh, so what you would do is once you had, I think the head of Zoltan Cool, which was a concept that I had come up with. I think I, I think I got the idea from an old Spawn comic where uh, Spawn actually carries around this character's head, or it was Hellboy, that's what it was, carries around this head of a character uh, on a, uh, like on his belt or something, or in a bag. And I thought, how creepy and weird is that, that this uh, immortal character, Zoltan Cool, would be, he'd still be alive. His body ended up being held together by sand. And that was a concept that came about later. But once you had the head, and once you constructed his whole body, I think, was when you could access his dungeon, where he uh, had been creating all kinds of crazy stuff like these guys. And this was, uh, the concept of the ring around this sand golem's uh, neck came from that maybe that this Zoltan Cool guy would use these rings around the, the sand golem's neck to kind of control them, to keep them in line, to keep them um, brainwashed, or at least keep them. It's like um, the Monkey King wore like this headband that would like strangle him if he got out of line. If, if he So that's how the monk could control him same kind of concept here so he's he wears this spiked kind of a ring around his neck to kind of show that he's sort of enslaved to this uh magic wielder this zoltan cool guy and uh zoltan cool itself himself by the way this jumps ahead a little bit but you can see my template this is when I, if you're uh if you follow a lot of my workshops you'll know i'm big on templates this was around the time that i started doing this and you can see that this was done in december 8th of 2009 so you can look that up. That's exactly where I was that day. I was working on this dude. I started out, let me show you this other page because this is how the design came together. I started out just rendering the hell out of a character like this. And this was the first iteration of Zoltan Cool. And Zoltan Cool, in my mind, was this, like at that point, we didn't really know what the hell this guy was gonna be other than that he was sort of a mage who had gone off to explore these, I think he had like possession of a, the Black Soul Stone or something like that. He had he had access to magics that were forbidden in that realm. So he went off and like created this dungeon with this uh, with his magics where he could kind of perform these experiments. And so that's all I really knew about the character at this point in this stage. So I gave him like these cool, you know, detailed robes. I was doing a lot of studies of classic fantasy painters at the time so you can see how uh, i was integrating a lot more of corel painter into my designs or in my paintings themselves the tinier details of like runes and man i was getting down to the meticulous stuff uh, but and it, we wasted a lot of time doing it this way because i think i spent like a solid four days doing this character design with no supervision no management intervention at all other than that i knew because we did the red lightning in the dungeon i needed to have red robes on like what was essentially uh, dark purple or uh, uh, cool colored robes. And this was him like sort of in his prime. This is not like Zoltan Cool as he appeared in the game. In fact, uh, they said, you know, he's really cool. Everybody loves the staff. Like everybody, everybody loved that staff with like this crazy horned, 
creature metal creature thing on the end uh but go back to the drawing board so i went back to the drawing board and i did uh let's see yeah this one was next yeah i was like all right so maybe what if he has like a religious like pope like hat something that made it implied that he was almost a religious leader that he had people following him so uh that's why i kind of had this you know pope style hat but that's really like kind of all that changed that and that he looked a little bit more ferocious almost like rotted and demonic and this was where the concept came about where maybe his whole body, this was when we were talking about the idea of like, what could make Zoltan cool really unique and interesting. And I was like, well, what if, what if the player gets his head and you have to assemble his body back together? And this concept came about uh, in, from this concept, this sold the idea that his body was being held together by the sand itself. And so like, that's why you see like, just, you know, obviously, you know, he's a wizard in the sand and like, I don't know, it just, to me, it was like, what if his blood was like, he was living with, with the sand itself and had it infused with his life force and was like holding his physical form together. So he was almost zombified. And they went, yeah, 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 yeah. that's cool. We love the idea. We love the concept. We're definitely going to do that. But like the, I, the design itself is really selling. There was a lot of resistance to the design itself. So I went back to the drawing board and I did these like, doodles these were some sketches i was just like okay fine screw it the funny thing is is they all went yo we really like that one so even though i had done this oh yeah like mm, that is a really dope looking painting and a really cool looking character but they were like nah dude we want something iconic something that like really speaks to uh the, the silhouette and so like sometimes just the rough sketch can spark the art director to go, yo, that's it. So like, that's why it's really valuable to not jump ahead and do these really fully painted things and spend a little time just doing these rough doodles. And if you've got an art director that has vision, you don't always have that. But when you do have an art director who has vision, they might look at your doodles and your sketches and your silhouettes. After this, by the way, I just started, whenever I got tasked with a new character, I would just do silhouettes, like a page full of silhouettes first. Doodles, like like 20 of these, you know, well, never really 20, but like sometimes like 12 of these. So like Demon Hunter, Monk, like when you start looking at my other character designs, you'll see that, yeah, like sometimes I would just do these like pages full of rough doodles and sketches to get the concept and the idea down without investing a ton of time because you invest a bunch of time in something that's fully painted and then it gets slammed down and they're like, go back to the drawing board. And you're like, I got nothing. So anyway, so they really liked this one. And after they, they really liked this one, I went ahead and did a more rendered version like this. And for some reason they were like, yo, that's it. And I was like, okay, well maybe I can, in, in, as to not waste too much of my efforts, maybe I can go back. And so like, that's where this design came from. And, and just to give them a little bit of variety because I never like to just give them one thing. Now, by the way, no. They kept this, uh, the staff, and I kept it in all the following designs because I was like, yo, that staff was approved. Everybody, not one person didn't like that staff. So keep the part that everybody loved and ditch the other stuff. Now, this was really me struggling with like keeping what I had from my previous iterations, the shoulders, because as you can see from this design, like it's pretty much just this almost triangular shape. I think part of what was also Diablo 3, there were there was a real a large group of people on the team who were like, yo, we need to go more Conan and like less fantasy with this, less out there, less exaggerated proportions, less dynamic silhouettes. And then you had another group of people that were like, no, dude, we need more dynamic silhouettes because the characters are so small on screen. And we'll see how that plays out with Diablo 3 versus Diablo 4, you know, in terms of art style, because a lot of the stylized guys left. We're not no longer there. And some people will applaud that and other people will go, what the hell? I guess I'll just play Diablo Immortal. Point being that this one was the best of all of those worlds. So this one ended up being the closest to the final in-game Zoltan Cool. And so that, yeah, when we really dig in, like, look at that. Oh, he is gnarly. I had this as my profile picture for a while, but I think most people don't know what the heck it is. So it just creeps some people out. <laughs> so people say that, oh yeah, try your stylized cartoony artist. But you know what? Back in those days, I did get a little bit gritty, man. And uh, look at this, like rotted flesh. 
with sand coming like pouring out of his joints and out of his arms and barely holding them together. This was like a combination of a lot of nice fun brush brushes that I used to use. I was still, I think, somewhere between Corel Painter and Photoshop. Oh, I hated the signature. So literally, almost like, <laughs> kind of out of frustration, I was like, yo, okay, I guess this is Zoltan Colt version 10. So everybody knows, I was kind of a brat. And sometimes just, that was my way of spiting. Look at this, 10 versions. But we finally got there, we finally got to the final design. I kept that uh, staff that everybody loved. I added in an interesting looking dynamic rune to his chest to kind of give him a little bit more of an iconic symbol. We still have a lot of the triangular feel, but I kind of inverted it. So it's almost like two triangles, which, you know, uh, but whatever the case, I mean, it still captured a lot of the vibe and the feel of uh, my favorites from the previous uh, versions. I think I got a little bit of sketch paint over from the art director on this one uh, with these horns kind of across the belt which ultimately gave him a lot more of an iconic design. Not not my favorite, you know? I mean, my favorite is still probably like that first one because I just, I spent so much time, there he is. I spent so much time on him. But ultimately, like, this one is still a very iconic representation of, you know, what the original concept and idea was. The sand is not represented in this image, which I don't like, even though I think that is part of the final game. And by the way, if some things changed uh, by the time the game was released, I don't know. Um, so I'm going to dig in a little bit more. This is just like the first of many, hopefully, deep dives into the concept process of some of the games and characters that I've designed, some of the games that I've worked on, and some of the locations that I designed. So uh, yeah, don't forget to subscribe. And if you're interested in being a character designer or a concept artist, I have a lot of workshops that are designed to teach you everything that I know uh, after having done this for 20 years. And if you're interested in my own indie games that I am now doing, uh, check out my page over on Steam. You can find the links to all that stuff in the text field below the video. So uh, I will see you guys in the next video. All right, ciao. I've said it before and I still believe it. There is a shortage of qualified concept artists to make all of these big AAA games that we play on current generation consoles. I know this because I've been a concept artist for over 20 years on some of the games that you played. I know it, I know you've played, if you haven't played them, you've seen them. And I'll tell you what, man, I'm retiring from AAA game development to make indie games, but not before I pass on all of my knowledge and experience in workshops, that's right. Being a concept artist isn't just about making pretty paintings. No, that stuff has got to be functional. And how do you learn how to make functional concept art that will get you the job? How will you improve your portfolio? Well, you could go to some art school that doesn't really teach you about game development, or you could take a mentorship with somebody that you're going to pay thousands of dollars for. And maybe even then they didn't actually work in the industry that you want to work in. They never actually shipped games before. Well, I have, I've shipped a lot of video games at very prominent companies, and I will help you to get a portfolio that will get you hired. I mean, you're going to have to do the heavy lifting, but at least I'll let you know what you got to do. Okay. And check out my testimonials and reviews to see whether or not these are for you. And I'm pretty sure that they are. If you want to be a game developer.